This is a question that I assigned in my Calculus 2 class, but about half of the class didn't answer this question correctly. Therefore, I thought of discussing this question with you all, and it's a nice question actually. If you would like to try it yourself, especially if you're in a Calc 2 class, please pause the video at this point, try this question yourself, and you may come back and check your solution. All right, I'm going to discuss the solution at this point. To start working on this question, I will factor out 4 from the denominator. As you can see, that 4 is inside of the square root. So it will get out of the square root as a 2, and it's in the denominator. So I will write this as 1 half x cubed on top inside the square root. Since I factored out a 4, the first term becomes 9 fourths plus x squared and we have dx. Now, this 9 fourths can actually be written as 3 halves squared. Integral x cubed. In the denominator, I'm going to write that 9 fourths as 3 halves squared plus x squared dx. At this point, I'm going to use a substitution. So the substitution I'm selecting is x equals 3 halves tan theta. This means if I differentiate it, I get dx equals 3 halves secant squared theta d theta. Now I have a 1 half outside integral. On top I have x cubed. x cubed will be equal to 3 halves cubed tan cubed theta. In the bottom Inside square root, I have a 3 halves squared plus x squared will be equal to 3 halves squared tan squared theta. And then I have dx. dx is equal to another 3 halves times secant squared theta d theta. All right. Now we have to simplify this. You can see that 3 halves can be factored out from the denominator. Inside the square root, you have a 3 half squared, so it will get out of the square root as a first order 3 half. And that 3 halves will be cancelled with one of the 3 halves on the numerator. So I will cancel it this way. And there will be a 1 here. Now in the denominator, inside the square root, I have a 1 plus tan squared theta. If you remember basic trig, 1 plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. And that term is inside of the square root, which means square root of secant squared theta. That is equal to first order secant theta. So first order secant theta means all of that can be cancelled with 1 secant theta from the numerator. Now let me write down the remaining pieces. I have a 1 half and also I have 3 halves raised to the third power and integral I have a tan cubed theta secant theta d theta. Now the life is easy. Maybe we can simplify this part, numerical part. 3 raised to the third power is 27 over 2 raised to the third power times 2, which means 16. Integral tan cubed theta times secant theta. I'm going to break it down as tan squared theta times tan theta secant theta, and there is d theta. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to replace this tan squared theta using the trig substitutions, which is secant squared theta minus 1. If you remember basic trig identities, we have tan squared theta plus 1 being equal to secant squared theta. Therefore, I'm going to rewrite this integral as 27 over 16. Integral tan squared theta should be equal to secant squared theta minus 1. That times tan theta secant theta d theta. The whole purpose of rearranging it that way is that we know the integration 
of tan theta secant theta. And also we know that the differentiation of secant theta is equal to tan theta secant theta. That's from the standard table. Now I'm going to split this integral into two pieces, 27 over 16. Let me open big bracket. Integral secant squared theta tan theta secant theta d theta minus integral tan theta secant theta d theta close bracket now i have a 27 over 16 outside bracket how about this integral we know if you have secant theta the derivative of secant theta is equal to tan theta secant theta which i can see right here so is there a theorem in integrations where you can directly apply to solve this part well we have integration f of x raised to the nth power times f prime x dx we know that this should be equal to f of x raised to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 for all n not equal to negative 1. We can easily use this theorem by identifying secant theta as equal to f theta and n as equal to 2. Because if you differentiate secant theta, you get tan theta secant theta. And if you don't like to use that theorem, that's completely fine. In that case, you will have to go for another substitution. That substitution will be u equals secant theta. All right, let me go ahead and use this theorem. Then I will have secant cubed theta over 3 as the first integration. And then minus integral tan theta secant theta. That's a standard integration from the standard table, which is equal to secant theta. I will close the bracket and there will be a plus c as well. However, we haven't finished this question yet because we have to go back and keep the solution in terms of the original variable. So the substitution we selected was right here, x equals 3 halves tan theta. If your x is equal to 3 halves tangent theta, then we know that tan theta is equal to 2x over 3. If that's the case, what's your secant theta? Secant theta should be equal to 1 plus tan squared theta, which is 4x squared over 9, the square root of all of that. This can be simplified some more and secant theta will be equal to a third times 9 plus 4x squared square root of that. Now we will replace those things back here 27 over 16 secant cubed theta that will be equal to 1 over 27 times 9 plus 4x squared raised to the 3 halves power. In the bottom, I will have 27, and with that 27, this 3 will be multiplied and it becomes 81. Minus secant theta is a third square root 9 plus 4x squared outside plus c. This can be kept better by factoring out a 3. 3 can be factored out, so this 3 will be cancelled. This is going to be a 27, and this 27 will be 9. Now, this is equal to 9 over 16, bracket, 9 plus 4x squared, ratio 3 halves power. In the bottom, we have a 27 with the first term, that minus square root 9 plus 4x squared, close bracket, plus c. This can be simplified some more because I can factor out the square root 9 plus 4x squared as well. 9 over 16 
square root 9 plus 4x squared bracket the first term will be 9 plus 4x squared in the bottom I have a 27 and then there will be a minus 1 plus c inside bracket we can simplify some more 9 over 16 square root 9 plus 4x squared this is going to be a 9 plus 4x squared minus 27 all over 27 which means 4x squared 9 minus 27 is equal to negative 18 all over 27 that plus c now this 9 and 27 can also be simplified 9 times 1 9 times 3 and then from 4x squared minus 18 i can factor out a 2 and that 2 will be simplified with this 16 and it will become 8 in the denominator and that 8 should be multiplied by this 3 so the denominator is now equal to 1 over 24 we have square root 9 plus 4x squared that times I have a 2x squared minus 9 plus c so that's the final answer for this question I hope you enjoyed this nice example thanks